Uh, it is always good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, I know that um, I know that many of you saw the ambulance on campus. Everything is fine. We had a lady that uh, that passed out just for a little bit, but when she was loaded onto the ambulance, uh, her her vitals were good and her blood pressure, all that stuff was good. So uh, everything appears to be fine. But she was transported to the to the, uh, the hospital just to make sure that everything's okay. So continue to pray uh, uh, for her and. Uh, but as she was loaded onto the ambulance, everything looked good. Now, right now, uh, praise God for an opportunity to give back. This is our regular morning offering. You saw a uh, note on the announcement slide talking about a special building debt reduction offering that we're doing today. That's going to be at the end of the service. This is just our regular offering. And uh, we appreciate all the faithfulness of Chapel Hill Baptist Church. And, and uh, thank you so much. We claim in the name of Jesus that we're going to be debt free. Amen. We claim that. That's going to happen. Amen. It's going to happen. And, uh, it's going to happen as a result of God's people continuing to be faithful like you have been. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. Uh, this is our regular offering. Let's go bless our offering. All right, Terry, bless. Lord, we come to you this time, Father, to thank you for the opportunity we have to come out and worship you. Father, we also thank you for the blessing that we have to give back in tithes and offerings. Pray, Lord, that we would give with a cheerful heart. Pray, Lord, that all this, these things would uh, be used to further your kingdom. Lord, we just thank you and praise you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I was lost, I was blind 
13. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them for their distress. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind.
Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. Everybody say his name, Jesus. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is wonder working power in the name of Jesus. There is saving power in the name of Jesus. There is chain breaking power in the name of Jesus. There is healing power in the name of Jesus. There is a salvation plan that must include the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Praise God. So the question is, do you know him today? Do you have a personal relationship with him? Because my prayer is this today. If you are here today, here's my prayer. Everybody look right up here just for a second. Here's my prayer today. My prayer today is that you get a perfect understanding where you stand with your personal relationship with Jesus. Just a perfect understanding on where you stand with your personal relationship with Jesus. Because that's, that's a lot of different stuff that can be going on when we talk about our personal relationship with Jesus. Okay? There may be some people here that do not have a relationship with Jesus. So my prayer today is that Holy Spirit makes you aware of what your relationship is with Jesus. There may be some people here today that do not have a relationship with Jesus that needs to confess Christ as their Lord and allow Jesus Christ to save their soul. Because Jesus went to Calvary and shed his blood there so that you can have a relationship with Jesus. So there's probably some folks here today that do not have a relationship. So I pray you are made aware of what your relationship with Jesus is. If you don't have a relationship, I pray that you would allow Holy Spirit to convict you. You would be receptive to Holy Spirit convicting you, and you would give your life to Him today. Saved people, Christians that have confessed Christ as your Lord, knowing for sure in your heart that you are saved. You have a relationship with Jesus. You know you're saved. I pray Holy Spirit makes you aware of what your relationship with Jesus is today. Because it should not be the same yesterday as it is today. So what is your relationship with Jesus? I know I say that a lot. And, and it's important when we come into the presence of the Lord, when we come into the church, that we allow Holy Spirit to speak to us and allow Him to make us aware of where we are with our relationship with Jesus. Because we're all over the spectrum. Amen? I know I am. There's some days, man, my relationship with Jesus is great. I feel like I can be like Peter and step out of the boat and walk on the water. There's days that I have like that. Praise God. Then there's other days where I feel like Peter. I mean, I feel like uh, Paul where I, I, I'm going out and I'm just acting crazy and persecuting and, and, and acting crazy. So my relationship is all over the place, just like yours, right? So what does your relationship with Jesus look like this morning, right now, inside Chapel Hill Baptist Church. My prayer today is that you are made aware of where you stand with Jesus. Praise God. John chapter number 6, verse number 35. We're going to talk about the bread of life this morning. We're going to have communion a little bit later. Uh, and, and we're excited about communion. But first, we're excited about the preaching of the Word of God. If you can and you will... Please stand for the reading of God's word. John chapter number 6. I'm going to start reading verse number 35. I'm going to read down through 40. John chapter number 6, verse 35 through 40. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up in the last days. Verse 40. And this is the will of him who sent me. That everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life. And I will raise Him up at the last day. Lord, thank You for Your Word. It's so good. 
And I pray right now in the name of Jesus and through the power of your spirit, Lord, that you would help me to preach it the way that it needs to be preached. God, I pray that your people that are sitting in your building, those of us that are saved by the blood of Christ, I pray that you would help us to see where we are, Lord. Show us where we are in our relationship with you. Show us what we need to do to make it better. Lord, for those here today that have never asked you into their hearts, I pray that you would make them aware that they're lost without you. God, I pray in the name of Jesus and through the power of your spirit that your will would be done today. Lord, help me to preach whatever it is you would have me to preach today. And we're going to give you glory and honor and praise, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Jesus helps us to understand how important it is to have a relationship with him. We're talking about our relationship. So what he does is he helps us to understand how important our relationship with him is. Verse 35, and Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. I love this scripture right here because Jesus refers to himself as the bread of life. And, and really, we know that, that, that without food, we will perish. Okay? And, and Jesus compares himself to the bread of life saying, without me, you will perish. And that's exactly where we are. So what is your relationship with him? He wants you to understand. Jesus wants you to understand how important your relationship with him really is. Because without it, we perish. We know that. So he is the bread of life. He gives us all that we need. Without him, we perish. What will be your response today to Jesus? What will be your response today to Jesus? Not your spouse's response. Not your children's response. Not your family member's response. What will be your response today to Jesus? He is the bread of life. And we know that without food we perish. And for us, if we don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, we will perish. Now that's, that's sad. It makes me sad. But it's the reality of the gospel. It is the reality of the plan of salvation. We either have a relationship with him or we do not have a relationship with him. He loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. The scripture teaches us the importance of having a relationship. Are there changes that you need to make to your relationship with Jesus? So now let's talk about that. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He shows us in the scripture how important it is to have that relationship with him. He shows us that. So what changes do you need to make in your relationship with Jesus? Let's just look. Just be real honest, right? There's times when I'm not where I need to be with my relationship with Jesus. Yes, I'm a preacher. Praise God that he called me to preach. Yes, I'm a Sunday school teacher. Praise God he called me to teach. But there's times in my life where my relationship with Jesus is not where it needs to be. There's times in your life when your relationship with Jesus is not what it needs to be. And he teaches us here that he's the bread of life. Without him, there's no way that our life can be the way that our life should be. Without Jesus in the middle of all that we do, in the middle of all of our conversations, in the middle of our work, in the middle of everything that we do, our life will not be the life that he wants it to be. And it all boils down to what is your relationship with Jesus? What does your personal relationship with Jesus look like? It's critical that we understand the importance. Our relationship with Jesus must be the most important thing in our life. It's not always like that with me. My relationship with Jesus is not always the most important thing in my life. Now, I wish I could stand in a pulpit and tell you, man, my relationship with Jesus is the most important thing to me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 365 days a year. It's all that matters. I wish I could do that. But the reality of it is, I can't stand in a pulpit and lie to you. Because I am a sinner. You understand that? I fall short and so do you. So we know that our relationship with Jesus is not always the way that it needs to be. But are we willing to own that today? Are you willing to own the fact that you and your relationship with Jesus is not where it needs to be. I own it today and, and I tell you that my relationship with Jesus is not always where it needs to be. But it should be the most important thing in my life every single day. 
Every single day as I get up and I go out into this world, my relationship with Jesus and where I stand with Jesus should be the most important thing in my life. What I, what I do, what I say, where I go, always should be reflected, reflecting Jesus. It should always be what Jesus wants me to say and where Jesus wants me to go. It should be the most important thing in our life. If it's not, it's not his fault. If our relationship with Jesus is not what it needs to be, it's not because of Jesus changing. Amen? It's because of where I am. It's because of my approach. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God. So Jesus wants us to understand how important our relationship with him is. And Jesus wants you to understand today when we have a relationship with him, he satisfies all of our needs. He satisfies all of our needs. If you look at verse 35, and Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes me shall never thirst. When I need comfort, Jesus gives me comfort. He satisfies all of my needs. I will never have any need that he will not satisfy. There's times in life where I need comfort. And I have looked for comfort in a lot of different ways and in a lot of different places over my lifetime, especially before I got saved. And I look for comfort in a bottle. I look for comfort in a lot of different places, right? Never found it because my comfort can only be found in Jesus because he satisfies all of my needs. When I need comfort, he gives me comfort. When I need peace, he gives me peace. And look, in today's world that we live in, we all need some peace. Amen. All you have to do is wake up and, and look at the news or look at social media and look at this world and you see all kinds of crazy stuff and all kinds of chaos. And it's like the world is just thriving on chaos, thriving on, on, on anything that you can look at. All of a sudden, now people are just thriving on this situation and it's so chaotic, right? That's what our enemy wants us to do. Listen. Satan wants us to get caught up in the chaos. He wants us to get caught up in all that's going on out there. And, and, and he, will, he will trick us into getting so caught up that we look just like the world. And we're in a state of panic. And we're in a state of chaos. And we don't have any peace. That's not what Jesus wants for us. When we need peace, he gives us peace because he satisfies all of our need. Where are you in your personal relationship with Jesus? you need some comfort, he'll satisfy you. Do you need some peace? He will give you peace. Do you need courage? Man, we need courage just to walk out the door, amen? We need courage just to get out the door and to go into this world that we live in. When you need courage, he will give you courage. He will give you the courage that I spoke about earlier. He will give you the courage of Peter to step out on the water and walk with him. He will give you the courage of Abraham. He will give you the courage of Abraham to tell Isaac, we're going on a trip. We're going to, we're going to give a sacrifice. And Isaac's helping to carry the very wood that he is going to be sacrificed That is courage. Now, no way Abraham, no way Abraham gets Isaac together and takes Isaac out, going to take him up on the mountainside to, to the designated place that the Lord's going to lead him to go, take him up there and sacrifice him because that's what the Lord wanted him to do. No way he does that on his own. Amen. And there's no way you face this world on your own. You can't do it. You cannot go into this world. You cannot have the courage to face this world. You cannot go out there unless you allow Jesus Christ to give you the courage to go. Because he satisfies all our needs. We can agree that we need some courage to go out there. Amen. When we need courage, he gives us courage. When we need peace, he gives us peace. When we need comfort, he gives us comfort. When we need encouragement, he gives us encouragement. Man, who, who needs some encouragement right now? Raise your hand. 
Amen. Amen. I was, I was going to say, now, go hug that person that raised their hand, but I'm not going to do that, okay? I'm not going to put you guys through that. But, man, there's something special that takes place when I need encouragement. And one of my brothers and sisters comes up, and they give me a hug, and they wrap their arms around and say, Brother, I love you, right? There's encouragement. And only through Christ do we have that encouragement. As we love each other, and as we support each other, and we spur each other on, right? We need that. We all need encouragement. And that encouragement comes from Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ only. You don't want, and I don't want, the world's encouragement. I don't want the approval of the world. I don't want them out there telling me I've done a good job. Man, I'm not trying to please the world. We try to please the Lord Jesus Christ and Him only. And through that, He encourages us and He uses people to encourage us. There's nothing like God's people loving on each other and encouraging each other. When I need rest, he gives me rest because Jesus satisfies all of my needs. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes me shall never be thirsty. He satisfies all of my needs. I will never need anything that my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will not give to me. He satisfies all my needs. And I'm never going to be hungry again. And I'm never going to thirst again. Why? Because he gives me all that I need. And when I need rest, Jesus gives me rest. Who needs some rest today? You guys are in good shape. All right. Good deal. Uh, all right. Nobody needs any rest. We need to find something to do then, right? Get a little bit of work done or something. I need rest. The scripture says in Matthew chapter number 11, verse 20, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's what it says. The word of God is so good, man. It's so good. And, and having a relationship with Jesus is so good, and it teaches us so much. I love it. I love preaching it. I love reading it. If you need rest, here's the cool thing. We know that Jesus gives you rest, but you've got to come. Right? I mean, there's times when I need rest and I'm not going, man. I, I'm just going to keep on going. I can do it. I'm just going to fight through. I'm just going to battle through. I, I, I need a day off. No, I'm not taking a day off. No days off. We don't have any days off, right? What are we taking a day off for, right? All those things. So we have to decide that we're going to come to him and let him give us some rest, Right? And it's the same for all these other things that he satisfies in our life. When we need encouragement, we need to come. We need to come to him and let him encourage us. When we need strength, we need to come to him and let him give us strength. When we need peace, we need to come to him and get our peace. The peace that passes all understanding. Because Jesus satisfies all our needs. We just talked about four or five. The question is this, church. Listen. What do you need today? What do you need today? Are you here today and you need to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you have a relationship with him today? Have you ever confessed him as your Lord and Savior? Have you ever asked him to come into your heart and to live forever and ever? Have you ever fallen on your hands and knees before an almighty God and confessed sin and recognize that you're a sinner and recognize your need for a Savior and know that you are separated from Him and know that you are going to be eternally separated from Him if you don't confess Him as your Lord and Savior? Is that what you need today? Will you allow Jesus Christ to save your soul today? He loves you and He wants to have a personal relationship with you. Is that your need today? Because if that's your need, Holy Spirit has already made you aware of the fact that you're lost, made you aware of the fact that you need Him, and then you have to decide to come. Then you come. Come to me. All. It, it, I love the word all in the scripture because it, 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 it's so inclusive. It doesn't matter. Come to me. All you who labor. All you who are heavy laden. Come to me so I can give you rest. Will you come today? What do you need today? What's your need? I don't know if I have preached about your need or not. But I know this. It don't matter what you need. Listen. It don't matter what 
you need. Because we serve a Savior and His name is Jesus and He satisfies all of our needs. It doesn't matter. All we have to do is come. And Jesus knows who is a believer and who is not a believer. He knows that. Verse number 36, but I say to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. What we see here in John is we see the scripture letting people know that, hey, look, I know you have seen me, but I also know that you don't believe. That's what the scripture says, what Jesus is talking about. And as sure as it says it right here in verse number 36, he is saying it to you and me today. Look, he knows whether or not you are a believer. Now, the people sitting around you have no idea. Because like we talked in Sunday school, we can put on our, our, our faces and we can come in here and put our clothes on, our tie. We can come in and, and we, we can walk in and we can smile and everything is good and all. Yeah, man, it's awesome. And we can pretend that everything is okay. We can pretend everything's fine. Everybody around me knows that I've been in church for this long and you know, so I can pretend that everything is okay, but the reality of it is this. My Savior, Jesus Christ, he knows whether or not you are a believer. He knows whether or not you are saved or unsaved. So the question is, are you a believer today? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Because he knows. Have you been convicted by Holy Spirit about your relationship with Jesus today? Whatever it is, whether you need to be saved or what your relationship looks like. Are you saved? Jesus knows. Jesus knows. And we can't trick him. I can, look, I can put on a smile. Can you? Everybody give me a smile. Yeah, look, everything's good. We're smiling. I can put on a smile. My Savior Jesus, he sees right through all that. He sees through that smile. He, he sees through these Sunday best that I put on. And what he does, he looks right into my heart. And he knows what I need. And he knows if I know. So we can pretend that everything is okay. And you can be here today and you can quench the spirit and not listen to the spirit on what he's saying to you, whether you're saved and need to be saved. You can, you can quench the spirit. You can, you can blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and not be saved today. You can be a Christian in here today and the Holy Spirit speaking to you. You can quench that spirit and you say, no, nah, I'm good. You can do that, right? You can do that. But the reality of it is this. You ain't tricking nobody but us and yourself. And we don't matter. <laughs> we don't matter when it comes to your relationship with Jesus. We don't matter. People have, have gotten up out of church buildings and left the building. Now when they need to be saved, have left the building because they didn't want people to look at it. And it's Satan. Oh, you, you know, those people are going to look at you. Those people are going to make fun of you. Yeah, that's just Satan lying. Christians sitting in, in churches all over this country right now today needing to make a life change, needing to, to allow the Lord Jesus to satisfy a need and get up and walk out because they don't want people to look at them. <clears throat> they don't want people to talk about them. And that's lies. That's just lies from Satan because he's a liar and he's the father of all lies. Jesus ain't never going to turn his back on you. You may get up and walk out of here today. Knowing you're lost. Knowing you don't have a relationship with Jesus. You may get up and walk out of here. I pray you don't. I pray that you can't in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk out of this building if you don't know him today. I pray he won't let you. But he will. I pray that you won't leave without giving your life to him. But you can you have that option. And if you do, Jesus is not going to turn his back on you. Now, we don't know how much time we got. We know that it is appointed. And all of us have an appointed time. There's going to be a day when all of us pass away. If he don't come back first, there's going to be a day when we all pass away. We don't know when that, that day is. We know that. Okay? 
But Jesus is never going to turn his back on you as long as you're on this side of heaven. Amen. He's never going to turn your, his back on Verse 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. He's not going to cast anybody out. He's not going to turn his back on anybody. When the world turns their back on you, remember this. Jesus will never turn his back on you. When your friends or so-called friends turn their back on you, you just remember this. Jesus ain't never going to turn his back on you. When your family, I pray they don't, but there's situations in families where sometimes families turn their back on family members. Just remember this. Jesus ain't never going to turn his back on you. What he's going to do is he's going to do exactly like the word of God says that he's going to do in one of my favorite parables. When the son wanted all that was his. Remember that parable? He wanted all that was his, man. Just give it to me now, Fox. I'm going to go out and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to party. And he goes and he does all this. The riotous living, right? We, we talk, all, all the partying is what he does. He takes all, he goes and he parties. We know he ends up in the pig pen. And then he starts thinking, man, my father's servants probably have a better night than right now. Right? He starts thinking. And then what he does is he comes to his senses. And then he begins to go back to the Father. Such an awesome picture of Jesus will never turn his back on you. It's such an awesome picture because as the Son begins to approach where the Father is, what the Father does is he begins to run toward the Son. If you're here today, we're going to give an invitation. If you're here today and you have a need, it doesn't matter what the need is. Maybe we talked about what you need today. Maybe we have but if you're here today and you have a need, I want you to think about the problem just for a minute, right? After all that he had done, after all the living that he had been through, he begins to walk home. And as soon as the father saw him, he runs out to him. And not only does he run out to him, but he runs out to him with arms open wide. He hugs him. He kisses his face. And he says, tonight we are going to have a celebration. My son that was once lost has been found. We're going to fix the fat cow. We're going to put a ring on his finger. And we're going to celebrate because he has come home. Jesus will satisfy every need that you have today. But you've got to decide to come home. I pray that you will. Jesus is never going to turn his back on you. I don't know where you stand with your relationship with Jesus. But at this point, there's no doubt that you know. Amen? Because the preaching of God's word never comes back void. You can't sit in the church building, hear the preaching of the word, and just dismiss it. Because the word of God is too powerful. And the word of God is sharp. And the word of God cuts. And the word of God speaks. And there's no doubt that the word of God has spoken into your life today. Now will you come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and let me give you rest. Will you come to me and let me save your soul because I love you and I gave my life for you at a place called Calvary. I shed my blood there for you so that you could come to me and let me save you today and let me, let me have a relationship with you. Christian, come to me because you do need courage. Come to me because you do need encouragement. Come to me because you do whatever you need. He supplies all my needs and he ain't never going to turn his back on anybody. Because he loves you. So what is it? What do you need? If you'll stand, we're going to give an invitation. And 